The world has seen many groundbreaking advancements in technology, from the invention of penicillin to the steam engine. Today, we have the third greatest invention in history. It is a digital climb. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I did not maintain a straight face, <laughs> oh, no, no, but no, maybe no, that no. doesn't matter. <laughs> so in today's experiment, we are going to be quantifying movement efficiency. For this test, I'm going to be playing the weak intermediate climber. Billy is the strong good climber and Cam is our analyst and he is going to crunch the numbers. Right, so here we have our force plate. This is what we normally use to test our critical forces, our digital assessment. You will have seen us use this uh, with testing people like Magnus Mitbase to find a Gasolfi and it's gonna measure the output of force that we pull down on it. So we're gonna set a climb, which has one of these force plates behind every hold that we're doing between the moves. So foothold, handhold, handhold. And that way we can look at how our force is distributed between all of the handholds and footholds as we make the moves. So I think the concept here is we're gonna set many different moves and try and figure out how we can best look at movement efficiency because there's gonna be different techniques. Dead point, we're gonna try drop knees, open hips. But I think we start with just the basic dead point. So we're going to start on a hold, drive for a foot and go to another hold. And I think we're looking at firstly the distribution of force yeah. through our legs and through our upper body. And I think we're gonna look at movement efficiency here as actually being able to put more weight through the foot and less through the hand. But also probably peak force, like if you're landing softly or if you're hitting it and big spike yeah. in force. I think there's probably two things you wanna look at in terms of movement efficiency. One of the reasons I've picked Billy today is because we are similar heights, similar builds, but Billy is objectively a better climber than me and stronger but I also feel like Billy's gonna have much better technique. So we're kind of looking to see if, despite all the extra strength, if Billy is gonna put less, less force down through the holds, or at least the hand holds, when we're doing the same movements. Basically, I'm Josh's stunt double for the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> better looking, <laughs> better climber, and stronger. <laughs> feel sorry for Josh. 73.7. I think we're going to be really similar. Yeah, I actually put on like at least two kilos in the past six months. Oh my god, you're actually 73 like, seven. There's like what? 0.5 difference. Oh my god. You. <laughs> the perfect stunt double. I oh think we're god. exactly the same. <laughs> Do you have about the same amount of hair product in as well? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We did each other's hair this morning. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't science exciting? Oh, <laughs> numbers are coming through. What are we looking at here, scientist? I don't know yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be brutally honest. I think we need to just collect a couple of data points okay. to get it rolling. Let, let's have a few goes. Oh, that's already interesting-ish. Oh no, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to similar? tell at the moment. Okay. I was trying to pull on that foot. My toe hurts, so that's a good thing. You did put uh, five kg less force for you. Five kg less? Roughly. Um, that's quite good, actually. That's quite big. So what I think is actually really cool about this is I'm getting objective feedback about how much I'm weighting my foot. So I could, I could, in theory, repeat a movement pattern again and again until I find the most efficient solution to a move and then try and be really conscious of what I'm doing with that. So I might think I'm putting weight from my foot, or I'm actually putting way too much through this handhold or vice versa. And I can try and correct for that with this feedback, which is better than just visually looking at it and being like, oh yeah, put more weight through your foot, or your hips are sinking out a bit too much. Obviously, I think both of those things together makes quite intuitive and objective coaching. So I'm getting better at climbing with data. And that's what we want to do. We want to really just draw the fun out of climbing. <laughs> Look at this. You don't put that much force through your hand compared to Josh on the middle jug. That felt like less force in the foot to me. Nice. We're going to first start with the most basic move, which was like a straight up dead point in line. And we're kind of, in this first case, just looking at the efficiency of movement between me and Billy. So in this first movement, the two biggest takeaways are in 
Firstly, the weighting through the starting jug, uh, in which Josh is putting about nine kilograms more force, so he's got more in the upper body, uh, versus on the foothold, there's about four kilos more force in my results. So more force in the, in the lower body for me, uh, versus more in the upper body for Josh. So we've set another dead point. This is now a much bigger move and it's actually a lot harder. What we're trying to do with this is set a move which is at a certain difficulty, which I'm gonna find really challenging, but now it's still pretty easy for Billy. So what we see with climbing is as soon as that difficulty gets really high and the effort gets really high, your technique or ability to find efficient ways through a problem start to decrease. So what I'm hoping with this move is that it starts to really show the difference between me and Billy as a climber. And we're hoping that this shows Billy being more efficient through the moves because he has more skill and more strength. Nice job. Ah, definitely capturing it out here. But I feel like I could get more of an inward arc on that move and catch the hold at a better profile. Nice. That looked better. Oh, that that looked way better. hard on you. Did you hit them? I was in a drag, but yeah. I think that that felt like a better position. Yeah. Objectively, as a coach, if I watched that, I'd be like, that's I, the better move. Immediately, I thought it looked better. Oh, I'm like, I fumbled that a little bit. There was definitely, I feel like I was swinging more than you. I wonder if the force there would be quite high. God, it moves so much nicer than you. It's like a... <laughs> It's like, it's like ballet on the wall. <laughs> it's like watching a good climber. <laughs> um, yeah, I think we're going to be best to sit down with it after afterwards. The, right. Because it's really hard to look okay. at everything. We can all just look at it and go, mm, mm, mm. you're really good at climbing. <laughs> Wait, can we get a quick, oh, can we get a quick thumbnail shot or like... <laughs> It's a really nice little You can squeeze. actually see the wall flex when you did that. Really? Like it pulled out. <laughs> that's a really big, um, I reckon that's higher than 62 than the last one. What's that? 60, 69. 69? On the start hole. Oh, hey. <laughs> Let's go into the one which is a bit more exciting. Probably a bit more like normal climbing as well. This is a big sideways dead point move. Similar to the dead point movement, Billy was putting 4kg more force into the foothold. Uh, where it's a little bit different was Billy actually put more force into the handhold. But what was really interesting about this movement pattern compared to the previous one was how Billy's hips move through the movement. Uh, so when you watch Josh do the movement, he's pulling directly to the hold as if it's just a straight line. Whereas when Billy does it, he creates like an arc with his hips and almost whips to the hold. Um, and when you look at the data, you can see the it's the smoother, isn't it's it? smoother, like yeah, yeah. And also the point where he reduces force on his hands to start the initiation with the movement of the hips, but then also the pull of the hands to go towards the hold. Um, but yeah, he, Billy's a lot more efficient in this one. And due to the efficiency, he actually put 4kg less, less when he hit the hold, uh, requir requiring less contact strength when he hit the top jug. So it's sort of like I've... I've like paid a debt at the start of the movement by putting more force in than Josh so that then at the dead point when I reach the finishing jug uh, I don't need to have as much contact strength on that hold. Yeah we've done that a few times on this channel we spoke about moving slower and using kind of your bigger muscles in your body to help reduce the amount of contact strength you're going to need when hitting a hold. I think that's really important with a move like this which is a powerful dead point and particularly if that hold we were going to is really bad we would find a case eventually where I wouldn't be able to hit it and actually stay on, but you would because you were coming into it slower and with less force. Lesson number two, Billy's a better climber than me. <laughs> <laughs> I sense a theme. So we've done two moves so far, both were pretty dynamic. The second one was definitely very dynamic. This is now gonna look at efficiency of a static move. And I think we've got two pretty obvious categories of static movement when it comes to hip position. So we're gonna look at open hip position, and twisting hip position. The second thing me and Billy are really interested to look at is if our preferences for twisting versus open hip position is objectively seen in the data. So Billy prefers an open hip position. I much prefer a twisting position. And we wanna see if compared to the two, we can relatively see that preference. Nice 
The first one with this is uh, I have a preference towards an open style of climbing. So my hypothesis going into this would be that I'd be more efficient in this movement than the twisting that we're looking at afterwards versus Josh being the reverse of that where he favors a twisting style. So we, I was expecting to do well in, on these scores and not so well on the other and vice versa for Josh. We do see that uh, I'm six kilos less on the, op on the open, on, this, on the middle jug. So I'm, by positioning my weight over the foothold, I'm taking quite a significant amount of weight away from my hands just by sitting onto that foot, which lines up with how I like to climb. Something we, we thought about when we were doing these moves is you can see on that yellow line, which is the, the top jug that we're moving to, is that you can see this little dip, this, this readjustment. It's something that features way more in my, my graph as well, um, which is uh, readjusting is pretty helpful if the hold's like really particular, but this is a pretty uniform hold. So that readjusting is another sign of efficiency, which just shows up on this graph. I'm unweighting it and weighting it again. So that in a way is showing kind of the effort and struggle to actually get to this hold. It's not that I'm readjusting because that's a habit. It's actually, it was quite a hard move to get my fingers feeling good on that hold. But you can see Billy hits the hold and stays smooth on it. He gets it well first time. Oh, wow. That. Why oh, shouldn't have taken my other foot off? That was smooth like butter. Oh. Smooth. Yeah. It's hard to know like, if I want to transfer weight or not. I kind of equaled it out there. But I guess you wouldn't see the fill transfer until I like, come across. Yes, I am objectively a better conclusive, climber. Conclusive evidence. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. <laughs> With Billy, we saw a 15 kg increase on that, that middle jug. Uh, so Billy was having to put more force through the jug to actually drop his knee. 15 kg more. 15 yeah. kg that more, yeah. To make the same move, just going from here to here. Yeah. Which I, I would say I'm worse at twisting, but this is pretty shocking to me <laughs> that it's as big a difference as it is. And we've had a swing of, Josh is now producing nine kilos less force than me in that in that movement. So firstly, big victory for Josh, good at drop knees. Yeah. Um, yeah, but it's really highlighting uh, this as a weakness, which is even more significant than I thought it was on my part. And does that bring the question up, is twisting more efficient or is preference more efficient for climbing style? Yeah, okay. So actually this yeah. is something that we spoke about when we first conceived of doing this idea. I like what is actually the use of this as a tool? other than just nerding out looking at the numbers is really cool. But we had the idea of looking at this with, we have the same problem, two different athletes. We've tried to eliminate as many variables as possible with being the same size, the same weight. We know that as a coach, we shouldn't be trying to get that athlete to achieve the perfect movement solution to a problem. It's all about that athlete finding their preferred movement solution. And using this actually shows us the best way for a move for that athlete. It might also show us some like deficiencies in movement and, and skill and something we can work on. If we're looking for an athlete, any athlete to find their best movement solution uh, in, in a given problem, we can set that and give that athlete immediate feedback on where they are moving efficiently and where they're not. And we might find that perhaps their intuition is not spot on. I think we had pretty good intuition going into this and that's shown, but it could be a really useful coaching tool. A couple caveats to the data we're looking at here is this is not a proper rigorous study. There's obviously some variables that we're not controlling for here and we understand that. Also, there will be some critics that say we are completely sucking the fun out of climbing by distilling it to numbers, which is not our intention. We do think this is actually really interesting for a certain objective. If you have any really interesting ideas how we can use this setup, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.